Hey guys, welcome to our lecture video for section 7.4, sum and difference identities. So these are really useful identities that we can use to um, solve some crazy trig functions without being able to actually know that exact angle or having that by figuring out two angles that add up or subtract to be that angle that we do know. Um, and so you can see here at the top, um, there are some formulas here. There's six of them. Um, with each sine, cosine, and tangent, and their respective addition and subtraction versions. If you want to wonder, if you're wondering, well, how could I do something like cosecant of u plus v? Remember, cosecant is just one over sine, so cosecant of u plus v v would just be one over sine of u plus v, and we can then apply the sine, the of uh, the sine sum formula. So the hardest thing here is figuring out what two angles add up to be the angle we're looking for. Um, and there's a few tricks to kind of help us with that. Um, and one of them is really thinking about fractions. So if we look at the unit circle and think about the unit circle, all of those angles that we know on there have some very similar denominators, right? Our denominators are one, obviously, for pi and zero and two pi, but two, three, four, and six, okay? So all of the angles that are on the unit circle that we know exact values for have a denominator of either one, which is easy, or two, three, four, or six. And so what's really nice about that is we can use those to think about what the common denominator would be to figure out what kind of possible angles we might need to add. So if we have an angle, say like this one in this first example, where we have a denominator of 12, which of these would have a common denominator of 12? Well, two and three would have a common denominator of six. Two and four would be four. Two and six would be six, right? Three and six would be six, but three and four, the common denominator, the least common denominator would be 12. So seeing that I need to have a least common denominator of 12, that tells me that the two pieces I need should probably have a denominator of three and four. So if I'm thinking about the unit circle, right, I'm thinking about kind of these angles that have denominators of either three or four. Okay, so let's go into this right here and kind of look through and figure it out. So what I need is I need two angles that when added together or subtracted would be fine too. Um, give me 11 pi over 12. Okay. And once I do that, it wants me to find the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent for this angle. And so 11 pi over 12. I know I'm going to need a denominator of 4 and 3. And so when we think about this, we are going to be adding these things together. They need to add up to 11, but we're going to multiply 1 by 3, multiply 1 by 4. And you're, looking, you're thinking, like, how am I supposed to just figure this out? And really, the easiest thing is you know the denominators now based on the denominator of what you're ending with. Just add some together. Just look at what's on the unit circle, add them together, see, see, see what worked out. You got a calculator. You don't really need to worry about the pi. Ignore the pi, because that just kind of carries over with us. Just add the numbers. And what ends up here is we need to have the angles 3 pi over 4 and, oh, sorry, not 3. This time I need 6. And pi over 6. Sorry. 4 and 6 also have a denominator of 12. Um, and so, I mean, we could think of this as 2 pi over 3, which is correct. And so, um, so you're going to figure out the denominator, which isn't necessarily a, a sure thing. You might have to, you guys to check, because 3 and 4 also have a common denominator of 12, but so do 4 and 6. And so um, you're going to figure that out. And really, I can't stress this enough, this is a very quick guess and check. You should grab your unit circle, add the fractions, right? 
I'm not trying to add three pi over four plus pi over six to see if I get 11 pi over 12. Just add three fourths plus one six and see if you get 11 twelfths because your pi is just going to run with you. Okay. So once we've figured this out, all right, which again is one of the harder parts of this process. Okay. We could just say that three pi over four, that's our u. Pi over six, that's our v. So now sine of 11 pi over 12 is equal to sine of 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 6. And now using the formula for the addition of angles in sine, we get that sine of u plus v is equal to sine of u times cosine of v plus cosine of u times sine of v. So sine of 3 pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 6 plus sine of pi over 6 cosine of 3 pi over 4. And now all we have to do here is use our unit circle to get the exact values for these. We get that sine of 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. We're multiplying those together. And then we add to that sine of pi over 6, which is um, 1 half. And multiply that by cosine of 3 pi over 4, which is negative root 2 over 2. And now I notice I did the um, formulas here a little different. I did sine and then cosine, where up in the formula it's cosine and then sine. Multiplication, you can do either way and it works. So... You multiply these together. Root 2 over 2 times root 3 over 2 is going to give us root 6 over 4. And then we're going to, from that, we have 1 half times negative root 2 over 2, which means this is going to be a negative. And root 2 over 4. So we add that together, and we get root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. We don't need to get decimal approximation because this asked for the exact values, right? So we do not want to get a decimal approximation. That's the whole reason we didn't just plug in our calculator sine of 11 pi over 12. Okay. So continuing this pattern, we're going to look for the cosine of 11 pi over 12, you say, oh, that's just cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 6. And if we look at our formula, the difference between the sine and cosine of angle sums is that in cosine, it's both cosines, then minus both sines. And so we have cosine of 3 pi over 4 times the cosine pi over 6 minus sine of 3 pi over 4 times sine of pi over 6. Now, this isn't something that I want you to memorize. I don't want you to memorize that sine of u plus v is sine of u times cosine of v plus cosine of u times sine of v. Use this formula sheet. Write these down. Matter of fact, look at the formula sheet in the class. So for those of you who are like, what? Check your emails. Okay, so we have this now worked down. We can figure out these values. Cosine of 3 pi, we know that's negative root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over, no, 6, root 3 over 2. Sine of 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. 
and sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Okay, we multiply this all together, we get negative root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. And then we combine that and we end up with negative root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. Okay, we're getting there. We're doing it. We can do it. Went out of room. That's all right. Tangent of 11 pi over 12. Tangent of 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Okay, now this one gets a little gross, right? Only in the sense that we have a fraction, but that's okay. Fractions are not scary. We are able to handle fractions. We are big, grown mathematician people. We are in math 112. So, <clears throat> tangent of u plus v is equal to the tangent of u plus the tangent of v divided by one minus tangent of u tangent of v. Again, don't memorize that. Just write it down, have that available to you to look at, and we'll get there. So we have the tangent of 3 pi over 4 plus the tangent of pi over 6 all over 1 minus tangent of 3 pi over 4 tangent of pi over 6. Okay, Whew. now we just grab our unit circle, figure out what tangent of 3 pi over 4 is, figure out what tangent of pi over 6 is, and substitute those values. And when I do that, use this page break. That's my fraction bar. Tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. Tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. Tangent of 3 pi over 4, right? We just already said that. That's negative 1. And root 3 over 3. So when I add these together, negative 1 is just 3 over negative 3 over 3. Okay. So yeah. So we end up with so negative 1 plus root 3 over 3, so 3 over 3. I'll write this step out for you. And then over here, I'm going to do one step of mental math. So we have negative times a negative gives us a positive. Positive 1 times root 3 over 3 gives us uh, root 3 over 3. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. 1 becomes 3 over 3 plus root 3 over 3. Now here's a cool trick. Notice every single one of these fractions has a denominator of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3. And when I do that, 3 is going to distribute. Uh, let me get some color in here. To distribute. And then down here, this one here is going to distribute. And each time, it's going to cancel out these 3s. And so what I'm left with in the numerator is negative 3 plus root 3. And in the denominator, I have 3 plus root 3. Now, if you don't like that trick, that's fine. Another way to do this problem, I'm going to kind of draw an arrow up here. So we have negative 3 over 3 plus root 3 over 3, all over 3 over 3 plus root 3. 3 over 3. So we could add these together, giving me negative 3 plus root 3 all over 3, all over 3 plus root 3 all over 3. And that is the same since it divided by a fraction, same as multiplied by the typical. So we get negative 3 plus root 3 over 3 times 3 over 3 plus root 3. Lots of 3s going on here. Those cancel, and we get negative 3 plus root 3 over 3 plus root 3. So either way is perfectly fine, right? Sometimes um, we get such into an algebraic mode that we're just like, chuk, 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 chuk. just follow the steps, follow the steps, follow the steps, combine, simplify, combine, simplify, combine, simplify. 
that we're not going to stop and see that, hey, I could multiply by three over three because all of the denominators on everything is three. And that's okay. Um, like you saw, right, we still got the same answer. So that's really all that matters. Um, it's just kind of up to you guys how you feel like attacking these problems. If you feel like kind of taking a breath, recognizing some of these special cases, it's good to do. Let's do another example. We're going to do the exact same thing. The difference is here, we're in degrees. So we need to figure out what two degrees that we know that are on the unit circle that add up to give us, or add or subtract to give us 105. And so what we know is we have the angle alpha here. And that is equal to 105 degrees, which is equal to 135 degrees minus 30 degrees. So that means our U and our V is 135 is our U and 30 is our V. I'm going to jump back up to the top to look at the formulas and, and talk about those real quick. There we go. Notice the formulas are very, very similar for the addition of angles and the subtraction of angles. For sine of u plus v, it's sine of u times cosine of v plus cosine of u sine of v. But when we're doing the difference of angles, it's sine of u times cosine of v. Hey, that's the exact same. But now it's minus cosine of u sine of v. If I look at the addition angles, the yeah, addition of angles, and then I look at the subtraction of angles, the only difference is all of the actual things are the same, sines and cosines and all that stuff. The difference is all of the signs are flipped. So if you ever completely blank, and let's say you're deciding to take notes on this and you spill your coffee on your difference formulas, so those are gone during your test and you don't want to look them up, just remember, flip the signs on your addition formulas and you're good to go. Now, hopefully you don't spill your coffee on this during a test and you just have all these so you can just look at them and use them. Right? I am really wanting to reiterate, do not memorize these. Okay, It's not worth your time or energy. And there's nothing worse than on a test losing points because you thought you'd memorize it, but you had memorized it wrong. And instead of sine u cosine v, you did sine v cosine v. So you flipped them and you get the wrong answer. There's no excuse for it because you guys are allowed to have notes on everything. So please do not memorize these and hope that you got them right on the test. Have this paper out for you. So <laughs> figuring out sine of 105 degrees, that's just sine of 135 degrees minus 30 degrees. So then using our formula, that is just sine of 135 times cosine of 30 minus cosine of 135 sine of 30. So now we use our unit circle, figure out what these values are. Root 2 over 2 times root 3 over 2 minus negative root 2 over 2 times 1 half. Root 6 over 4. The minus and the negative combined be a plus root 2 over 4. This is root 6 plus root 2 over 4. All right. So there's our first. Cosine of 105 degrees is equal to sine. No. It's equal to cosine of 135 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is equal to cosine of 135 degrees times cosine of 30 degrees. And so we're adding sine 
of 135 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees. Okay. So we work our way through negative root 2 over 2, cosine of 30, root 3 over 2, plus sine of 135 is root 2 over 2, and 1 half. Negative root 2 over 2 times positive root 3 over 2 is negative root 6 over 2. Sorry, not over 2, over 4. <clears throat> Combine these and we get negative root 6 plus root 2 all over 4. And if you want to, if you're somebody who doesn't like a negative out front and you want to rework this, it's perfectly okay to flip this addition and say this is root 2 minus root 6 all over 4. <laughs> okay? So notice these are all pretty straightforward and simple. Just plug into the formula and apply it. And that's really all that we are doing. So let's do tangent. So tangent of 105 degrees is tangent of 135 degrees minus 30 degrees. And I don't like that at all. I want to give myself a little more room. Tangent of 105 degrees is tangent of 135 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is equal to tangent of 135 degrees minus the tangent of 30 degrees all divided by 1 plus tangent of 135 degrees times tangent of 30 degrees. Whew. All right. And that's equal to, fill in our values, negative 1 minus root 3 over 3 over 1 plus negative 1 root 3 over 3. Now, if you remember last time, we're like, everything had a denominator of 3. I can see here, everything has a denominator of 3 or 1. So again, I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. And so when I distribute this over to here, that just ends up being negative 3. But when I distribute it to this piece, the, the 3 here, this 3 and this 3 cancel out, leaving me with minus root 3. <laughs> Then since when I multiply these together, they just give you a negative root 3 over 3. I can kind of just work with that. And so then we get 3 times 1. That gives me just a 3. 3 times the negative root 3 over 3. The 3's cancel. And I just get negative root 3. Now again, if you want to, you can absolutely go through... Uh, combine these fractions in the numerator, combine in the denominator, multiply by the reciprocal, cancel out, and you'll end up at the same place. It's just some extra steps that we don't want to deal with. All right. Now, this is a little different. We want to find the requested values given that sine of u is 5 thirteenths and cosine of v is negative 3 fifths with u and v both in the second quadrant. So the reason we need to know that, to find cosine of u plus v, I'm going to need for both u and v, I need to know both their sine and cosine values. Let's sneeze maybe. Okay. <laughs> Bless me. Thank you, guys. It's so nice of you. So we need to be able to figure out the cosine of u, and we need to figure out the sine of v. 
And so this is really simple. It's an old problem that we've done before. <laughs> we know that both angles fall into the second quadrant. And I know that for you, so we'll, this one here, this is, we're looking at you. I know that the sine, okay, is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is going to be 5 over 13. And so we can use the Pythagorean identity to figure out what this x value would be. And that is going to be negative 12. Negative 12 in this problem. We do the exact same thing for v. Right? And we know that for v, this is a negative 3 here. This is a 5 here. We use a Pythagorean theorem. Figure out that this is 4. And by the Pythagorean theorem, right, we're just talking about right triangle. A, B, C gives us that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Not the Pythagorean identity, right, which was sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So now knowing this, I know that sine of U equals 5 thirteenths, and I know that cosine of u equals negative 12 thirteenths. And I know that sine of v is 4 fifths, and cosine of v is negative 3 fifths. So now I can come back over here. Using that information, I can figure out what the cosine of u plus v is. Cosine of u plus v is simply equal to cosine of u times cosine of v minus minus sine of u sine of v. So we use the values that we know. So cosine of u is negative 12 thirteenths. Cosine of v is negative 3 fifths. Sine of u is 5 thirteenths. Sine of v is 4 fifths. We combine these two by multiplying them together. Negative times negative is a positive. 12 times 3 gives us 36. 13 times 15 is 65. 5 and 4 gives us 20. 13 times 15 again is 65. 36 minus 20 is 16, not 30 fifths, 60 fifths. So given that sine of u is 5 thirteenths, cosine of v is negative 3, 15, 3 fifths, and they both fall into second quadrant, the cosine of u plus v is 16 over 65. Okay. Now, Notice that we are dealing with the same angles. This is just part B. So we're still dealing with the same U and the same V. So what we want to figure out now is what's the tangent of U and what's the tangent of V? Because if we look at the next part, it says what's the tangent of U plus V? To do that, we need to know the tangents of them together. So, if we look at our angles, okay, we see that the tangent of u is going to be negative 5 over 12, and the tangent of v is going to be negative 4 over 3. If you're confused where I'm getting those, um, go back a few lessons and refresh on the kind of right triangle trig and stuff like that. So that is... I believe 6.2 is where you would want to go back and refresh. If you're really stuck on those, email me. We'll, we'll work through. So tangent of u plus v. Using our formula here, we have that this is equal to the tangent of u plus the tangent of v all over 1 minus the tangent of u times the tangent of v. Plugging in what we know, we get negative 
5 twelfths plus negative 4 thirds or 1 minus negative 5 twelfths times negative 4 thirds. If you want to use your calculator, however you want to do this, right? Combine, simplify, we end up with the final answer, the final value of negative 63 sixteenths. Is that correct? I don't want to check my notes. One second, everybody. Yep, that was right, negative 63 sixteenths. Okay, I thought that was right. All right, last question. What quadrant is u plus v in? Well, let's figure this out. What we know is that both u and v are in the second quadrant. So what could our possible answers be? Well, if we think about it like this, if they are as big as possible, let's say they're both you know, 179 degrees. That's going to put us in the fourth quadrant. Okay. If they're as small as possible, so they're both like 91 degrees, okay, that's going to put us into the third quadrant. So we know that this is either going to be in the third or fourth quadrant. What we have to use then from here to figure out what actual quadrant they're in is the values of their trig functions. Because we know that in each quadrant, the trig functions have different values. Like we know in the first quadrant, we know sine, cosine, and tangent are all greater than zero. In the second quadrant, Okay, since sine is our y value, sine is greater than zero, but cosine and therefore tangent are less than zero. In our third quadrant, sine, the y value, and cosine, let me, and cosine are both negative. Since both of those are negative, that means that tangent is positive. And then in the fourth quadrant, okay, cosine is positive, because cosine is our x value, and sine is negative. And since sine is negative, cosine is positive, that means tangent also is going to be negative. So this is just simply going off of kind of unit circle ideas of sine is x, cosine is y, tangent is y over x, and looking at those relationships within these quadrants. So we know because u and v are both in the second quadrant, u plus v has to either be in the third or fourth quadrant. Can't be anything else. So what we can do is we can look at our sine and cosine values and our tangent values. So we found the cosine. Why is this not writing? There we go. And our tangent value to see which quadrant we're in. And if we look, we can see that cosine was positive and tangent was negative. That happens, so here in the third quadrant, cosine is negative, tangent is positive, but we had that cosine was positive and tangent was negative. It means we must be in the fourth quadrant since cosine of u plus v was positive and tangent of u plus v was negative. Okay. 
So that's a little extra something. That's just some critical thinking, some reasoning. Be be ready for that kind of question, right? I love to ask kind of questions like this where you don't just follow a formula. Don't just you know plug something in. You actually have to just think for yourself, identify, use the properties of what's going on. So be ready for that. All right. Example four, solve the equation. Sine of x plus pi minus sine of x plus one equals zero. Notice, okay, that this first piece, that x plus pi is inside of the sine function, but over here, the x plus one is not inside. So this is not an angle, ident an angle addition here, okay? This is just minus sine of x plus one. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to use my angle sum formula for sine of x plus pi, and that's going to give me that this equation becomes sine of x times cosine of pi plus cosine of x times sine of pi minus sine of x plus 1 equals 0. So look at what we know. We know what pi is, right? So we can identify what's cosine of pi and what's sine of pi. Since sine is our y value and pi is 180 degrees, right? So it's all the way back on the negative x. That means sine of pi equals zero, which means this is gone. The reason it's gone is because anything times zero is zeros. Adding and subtracting zero doesn't matter. So what I have is I have sine of x and cosine of pi is negative one. So this just becomes negative sine of x. So negative sine of x, so that's what it, Give it this. This is gone, and we have minus sine of x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1. Combine these, so we end up with negative 2 sine of x equals negative 1, which gives me, leaves me with sine of x equals 1 half. So divide both sides by negative two, we get sine of x equals one half. Since we're only asked to find these solutions on zero to two pi, so within one rotation, we don't have to worry about any of the two pi um, n stuff or anything like that. And we just have this lovely pi over six. And five pi over six. If you're not sure how to get those right, that's the last section, section 7.3, and we used to solve that equation, um, that sine of x equals one half. And we're just using the unit circle. We know a sine being the y value equals one half. We know that's on the unit circle. We look, where is it positive? And we go from there. All right. Now, let's verify some identities using the angle addition formulas. Now, I don't want to look at the right hand side on this first one even though you may think like oh we have some stuff to do we have one plus tangent that's really sine over cosine one minus tangent is cosine over is sine over cosine combine those frac combine that with a one simplify and see what we get but how in the world are you going to get from something that's sine and cosine of just t to where that's tangent of t plus pi over four right that's a very challenging thing to get to so we definitely want to use our um angle addition formula here and so what we end up with, so we're starting with the left-hand side, okay? And I'm going to use the angle addition formula right off the bat, okay? So what we end up with is tangent of t plus tangent of pi over 4 over 1 minus tangent of t times tangent of pi over 4. I don't know why I wrote this so small. Tangent of t is just tangent of t. Tangent of pi over 4, if we look at the unit circle, 
That's y over x, so that's root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2. That's just 1, so that's plus 1 over 1 minus tangent of t times tangent of pi over 4, which is just 1. This is just 1 plus tangent of t over 1 minus tangent of t which is equal to our right-hand side. Perfect. Awesome. So, it's not too hard, right? Not too crazy. Let's do B. Sine of 2x equals 2 sine x cosine x. Well, we're talking about angle addition. So, how, like, there's no angle addition here, right? We have multiplication, but that's not addition. No, wait, it is. Right, because 2x is really just x plus x, right? So if you want to recall, 2x equals x plus x. So we're going to start with our left-hand side. We get sine of x plus x. Using our identity, our, our formula here for the angle addition, the angle sum, we get that this is sine of x plus, oops, not plus, times cosine of x plus cosine of x times sine of x. Which order doesn't matter when you multiply, so this right piece is cosine x times sine x, which is just sine x times cosine x, so those are the same. So that's just two sine x cosine x, and that is our right hand side. Easy. Easy peasy. All right. Last one. Use the figure to find tangent of gamma. So using that tangent of alpha equals 11 over 21 and tangent of beta is 10 over 21. So if tangent of alpha equals 11 over 21 tangent of beta is 10 over 21 how can i figure this out okay well we need to figure out what is how can i do these angles right how can i figure this out so let's let this angle right here uh, let's go with a color Single here. Let's let that be theta. So what I know is I know that alpha plus theta equals 180 degrees. And I know that beta plus theta plus gamma is equal to 180 degrees. Ooh. So what I know is that alpha plus theta is equal to beta plus theta plus gamma. Which means if I subtract theta, I get that alpha is equal to beta plus gamma. Well, that's pretty awesome. And what's cool, so that helps me, right? But what I'm trying to find, if you recall, so galaxy pen, is I want to find tangent of gamma. Okay, so just subtract beta from both sides. And in doing that, I end up with gamma equals alpha minus beta. Oh, that's awesome. Now, I don't expect you to have looked at this problem and been like, that's what I want to do. Yes, that's why I did this problem to show you this technique, this, this skill, um, this little kind of tool that you guys can use and apply in the future so that way you can work through it. So we've done all this, right? And the reason why all of this is true is because we know the angles, the sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180. And we know that if two angles create a straight line, they must sum up to 180. 
So what I can now do is I can now say that tangent of gamma is the same as the tangent of alpha minus beta, which then using the identity, that's tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta over one plus tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta. And since I know tangent of alpha and I know tangent of beta, they were given to me from the problem, I can just substitute those in. I get 11 over 21 minus 10 over 21 over 1 plus 11 over 21 times 10 over 21. And believe it or not, this comes out to 21 over 551. And that's it. There you go. Tangent of gamma, which was this crazy thing. Looking at this drawing, you're like, how in the world am I ever going to get tangent of gamma? Right? That's not even a, in a right triangle, so I can't use opposite of right hypotenuse, right? We could for alpha, right? We could say that, oh, alpha, that means that this side here is 11, and this side here is 21. But then beta isn't a right triangle. This little triangle isn't a right So we couldn't say, oh, well, that means that this is 10 and this is 21, because that's not true. And so we ended up with a very new problem, which required us to use this new idea of adding angles together and getting this statement of our gamma angle. Okay, so that is it for this lesson. I hope you guys enjoy it. Biggest takeaway I can give you guys for this, calm and use the formulas. Don't memorize them, use them, and just grab your unit circle. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you in section 7.5.